Hello everybody, my name is Ethan Mathe Google and Literature, and today I'm gonna to be talking about Why We Sleep by, by Matthew Walker. It's it's a pretty good book, I I don't know to admit, but but I will but I will be talking about my top three chapters for today. And, and today I'm gonna to be talking about um caffeine and and jet and jet lag, the effects of melatonin. Okay, okay, so you know so you know when we're usually awake that we usually find ourselves fall, getting tired and feeling the need to fall asleep. This is because this is because our our brain usually builds up a certain type type of chemical called melatonin, which usually which which is essentially creating something called a sleep pressure. It it pressures it builds up to slowly pressure you into eventually falling asleep and getting a good. And getting a good night's rest. Now, 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 while, now, while it does, it does press you to sleep. It's merely suggestible, and people can usually try try to avoid it through many ways. But a common way they do it is through coffee. Co coffee because the caffeine in it a lot suppresses the melatonin amount. But it does, but it doesn't wash it away instantly. It just suppresses it for that moment, and and during and during then, it also enhances your mi mind, your higher thinking thinking functions, and so so that you can think at your full capacity, which is actually kind of why it's known as a nootropic, a mind enhancing drug. However, however, when you do drink coffee, especially late at night when you're pretty much already tired at that point. You should you should expect a caffeine crash in which all of the melatonin built up from that night and and the melatonin that was built up while while you were still working it it will suddenly hit and you will immediately feel like you need to sleep like it's a necessity no question asked though though the length the length at which caffeine can affect you could vary. For most people, it usually tends to last pretty long. But like for some people, and this is among a rare, a rare amount among the majority. So do not assume that you're one of those people. Some of those people actually don't don't really have the effects last long for them. In fact, in fact, it only lasts for like about an hour or thirty minutes, and then suddenly the melatonin comes rushing back in. Now. Now, going off topic from caffeine and, and still on a topic from melatonin, there is also jet lag. You, usually, if you were to travel to another country in a different time zone, you would you would obviously feel offset by the time by the time there. It you you are still awake when it's night, and when it's and when it's like late afternoon, you feel the need to go to sleep because it's night. It's night back at home. And this is because our circadian clocks, the the stuff the stuff, the theoretical thing, clock that we have inside us that that determines when or not we fall asleep. The those aren't adjusted to the circadian clocks of other people at other people that are in a different country. However, we can thankfully ha we thankfully have the ability to adjust our circadian clocks by by an hour or so per night. So theoretically, if you were to go to France from the U.S., it it will be a nine-hour difference. So it'll take about nine nights to get used to it. How, however, however, this also may this also is effective when you come back from from the country and into and into your homeland, the states. So just be prepared to just be prepared to readjust to the time zone when. When you come back and suddenly have jet lag. Anyways, that's all for today. I hope you liked this video, and I'll see you next time. Bye.